Hey guys, it's Kelly with Embroidery Nurse. So I swore I wasn't going to do another video until I move into my new home, which hopefully is happening at the end of this month. So you guys hold tight. I have been making this long list of things that I want to make for you guys, but this room, we're a little tight. We're a little crammed. We're a hot mess. But today I had to make a video because yo, look at this. Are you going to be able to see this? Can you see this? Can you see this little thing? Oh my goodness. Look at that cute little thing. That's my six year old's first tooth that he lost. <laughs> Y'all, he cried. He was scared. He didn't know what to do. But it's so sweet. Okay, let's look again. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Oh my goodness. So I've known his tooth was loose and so I should have done this long before now, but again, I wanted to make a video of it when I did it because these are too cute not to share, but I was hoping it wouldn't fall out until we got into our new house, which will be happening in hopefully 16 days, give or take. Um, so anyway, this morning it came out, I think he pulled it out um, and it scared him, but we have to make a tooth fairy pillow that he can use tonight. These are amazing. Um, I've had them for my other boys, but I just think they are too cute not to share. It, they're so cool and we're gonna make it today. Got everything ready, got it all prepped, and um, I just wanted to bring, bring you along for the ride because you're gonna wanna make these. I used to sell them in my Etsy shop, but they're a little time consuming, so I pulled them off my shop, but Definitely want to make it for my own son. I imagine you're going to want to make them for your own kids, grandkids, whomever you sew for, embroider for. They're just great. They're so cute. You basically, it's going to be a cute little pillow. You're going to put the tooth in it and the tooth fairy comes and removes the tooth from the pocket and puts the money in the pocket. And what I love about it is you hang it on your child's door. So instead of having to go into their room, remember at 3 a.m., to find that tooth under the pillow, if you can even find it in the dark and have the tooth fairy put money somewhere and then they can't find that. Instead of doing all that, this this is just so easy and it's so cute and, it, and it's a little memory thing. You pull it out every time, um, they lose a tooth and just use it over and over. So I'm so excited to show it to you. So today we're gonna be making an in the hoop tooth fairy pillow. The other great thing about it is you can make it on any machine. You don't need a multi-needle. It actually does wonderful on a single needle because we're just doing something flat. So awesome. Can't wait to show you. First thing I'm going to show you is where I get these designs because there is a wonderful digitizer that makes amazing um, in the hoop tooth fairy pillow um, designs. So I'm going to show you that first. I'm going to show you how to do it in a brilliance because there's a couple of steps to it and then we're going to make it together. So come along for the ride pillow ever okay so first thing I wanted to show you is where on Etsy to find these amazing designs so let's go ahead and go to Etsy and here is lovely leaf applique y'all these are amazing so this shop owner um, her name is Shannon and I don't know her personally but I love her designs so it looks like she's got a sale going on right now so that's pretty cool um, but lovely leaf applique so she does great embroidery designs. Um, she loves to digitize. That's where her passion is by reading her about section. But I want y'all to see over here, look how many tooth pillows. So she does a five by seven in the hoop tooth pillow. Y'all, she's got 106 designs. And then a six by 10 in the hoop tooth pillow. She's got 29 designs. Now I do the five by seven. I think that's the perfect size. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I'm just going to show you, I mean, seriously, y'all, look at all these different ones. I mean, some are just super cute, just with the tooth, like this one right here, and then the girl tooth. And you can make these look any way you want. I mean, they can literally have whatever fabric you want on them. Um, so just kind of looking through all of these, there's a unicorn. Look at that. There's Black Panther. There's a Spider-Man. There's a fox. There's Harry Potter. Super Mario. Uh, look at that. There's even an evil fairy. What is that? Maleficent, maybe? There is a hockey player. Oh, that's cute with the tooth. Oh, my goodness. There's a cowboy, an angel, a unicorn, a policeman. I mean, look at all these, y'all. 
I mean, you know, you'll find one. I mean, there's three pages she has of just the five by seven in the hoop tooth pillows. So you can see you personalize it with the, the name. These just say my tooth. So those would be cute if you were just making them in bulk or in advance. But I like to add the name to it. I just think it's super duper cute. Well, look how cute that is. Santa's magic key. Oh, that's when you don't have a fireplace, right? That's cute. N not a tooth pillow though. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, I don't know. That's just a regular boy and a regular girl, I guess. Their names are Dick and Jane. That's kind of funny. Um, oh, that's cute. Uh, um, carriage. I've made this one before. The monster truck. I like that. Little Anna and Elsa. Paw Patrol tooth. A narwhal. Those are so fun. I actually went to the aquarium today. I didn't see any narwhals, though. Let's see. Look how fun. Okay, one more page. Let's see what else. Oh, there was a soldier. That was cute. Uh, R2-D2, a cactus. Ah, so look, that shows you how, oh, you can't see where I point. This shows you right here how you put the money in it from, oh, I'm sorry, how the tooth fairy leaves money. Look at this one. It's got a tutu. Mm. So what else? We've got some more Paw Patrol, cute little sailor, ninja. Y'all, seriously, I mean, stop it. Love it. There's the trolls. Here's, there's a couple that are packs where you can get like several in a pack. That's a good way to do it. Um, there was one, um, the little poop emoji. There was one where you could get like the top 10. That's a good pack to get. That might have been on the first page. Um, but y'all, this is the one we're doing right now. So my son, we just moved to the beach. He's all into sharks. We actually went to the aquarium today and saw some sharks. I'll show you a picture if I can get it on here. Um, but anyway, so he's doing uh, his next room. We're going to do shark theme. Um, we're kind of getting a little more big boy room for him. Um, so we're going to do the shark tooth one. So I already have it. So we're going to go to a brilliance now. And I'm going to show you how it works. So we're going to pull up. I keep all of my files on um, a huge um, drive. Where's my camera? So this is my um, flash drive that's it's huge. I mean, it's got a lot of storage on here. I don't guess you call it. It's like my backup file, but this is where I keep them all. Um, just because I have so many files, I want them all to be on there because they take up too much space on my computer. They were just overwhelming my computer. So that was a solution that the Geek Squad helped me with. Um, okay, so anyway, let's go down here. They're all in my downloads, my embroidery nurse downloads. And here's how I keep mine stored. Um, you can see how I name things. Um, is it alphabet applique or if it's just an applique, uh, applique Christmas, applique dinosaurs, Easter, applique fall. I have them all kind of separated. There's applique Halloweens. I try to name them so I can find them. It's not always the most successful, but I try. Um, so let's go all the way. Let's go past appliques. Let's go past fonts. Let's go past monograms. I think I saved these. Here's the Tooth Fairy pillow, the shark one. So this is a five by seven shark tooth pillow. Um, it comes with awesome instructions. So let me show you those. I already have it pulled up as well. So every one that you buy comes with the same um, Tooth Fairy pillow instructions. It doesn't matter which one you purchase. And it goes over all the materials that you'll need. Um, and it explains to you, you know, just step by step. And we're going to do this together today. But just so you know, it comes with really good instructions. Um, it, it, a lot of it is just instructions on how to do an applique because that's what this ends up being. Like this right here is just, you know, talking about how to do the tack down stitch and placement stitch and whatnot. So, uh, but it does show you just step by step, you know, what to do and how to um, finish it at the end as well. So very helpful that that comes with it. Um, let's go back here and go back to our file. So I use PES files, so I'm just gonna drag and drop. Don't think I did that. Did it do it? Yeah, it did. Okay, and here we are. So we're in a brilliance now. I'm gonna click on my design and turn it sideways. Um, perfect, so it's the right way. And then I wanna add the personalization on here. So I wanna add my son's name. I'm gonna just go over here and pick um, the font that I want. I don't have a lot of fonts that I use that are small letters, but um, I do really like this Henry font. It's good for small letters. Um, so I'm using the half inch font. 
So we're going to say Thomas, Thomas's. I really hate when it's a plural S name, but I, I did that to myself, didn't I? Thomas, oops, <coughs> excuse me, Thomas Shark, Thomas's Shark. And we're going to say tooth. So you see how we're just using it, but typing it in the BX fonts, which are amazing. I love it. Thomas's shark tooth. Oops. Oops. What did I just do? Let's back up whatever I just did. Edit. Undo whatever I just did. Yeah, I thought I made it bigger by accident. Let's put it in place there. Okay. So one thing that you have to do to make sure that this is put in at the correct time, and this will show in your um, directions that are given, um, you have to break down over here, um, and you have to make sure that you put whatever writing before this line right here. So it'll be a different number, but right here on mine, it's step 113 and 114 and 115. You need to bring it above that because this is the finishing stitches so you want to make sure that you do the letters before you do the finishing stitch. So you're going to bring, drag and drop all three words, drag and drop. That didn't drop in the right spot. Drag and drop, drag and drop. Okay. So now it's exactly where we need it to be. So the words will get on there before we do the finishing stitch to it. So for me, what I do, I like to have a printed copy. So I'm going to print it out and we'll have a copy to work with. So I hope that helps. We're going to go and start stitching. All right, come on along. Okay, so we've printed it out. Um, we have our design here. You can see I've printed it out. It's got my grid lines on it. Y'all know from watching that I love to have my grid so I can see what we're doing. So Thomas's shark tooth. Whoa. So. This is gonna show me what size fabric I should cut out. And I've already picked out my fun colors. And so this is gonna be for the shark. So I'm just gonna lay it over top, cut it this side. And y'all, it's, it's wrinkled, it's jammed because I have everything boxed up right now and I just have to pull it out and iron it out. But thank goodness for irons. All right, so that is the size of my shark. And I'm going to do heat and bond light on it just so that it looks good over time. I know this isn't something that we're washing, but at least this will help it so it doesn't fray while I'm making it. And I need a gray for the mouth. Don't need much of that. And then the other pieces, I've got my instructions here pulled up. Um, basically what is recommended is that I, for the pillow part of it, which I'm going to use this um, navy, that we're going to um, cut two six by eight pieces of this fabric. And so that will allow a little bit, you know, past our size there for the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna fold it in half here. Okay, and it says six by eight. So let's measure that here. We've got eight. Snip a snippy, and then let's go down to the six. All right, so we'll cut that piece. Up. So two pieces, because we'll need that will be the front and the back of our pillow. Okay, and because this stuff has been so scrunched up, I'm gonna just iron it. I'm not gonna put heat and bomb light on this part. There's just no reason for that, but. We'll just give it a little iron, those two pieces. And I am going to put my heat bond on these two pieces. So I'm just doing it straight off the bolt here. I'll save little pieces like that because there will be something that will need that later. If it's an itty bitty piece like this, I've learned just to let it go, let it go, let it go. I used to save everything and then it was like, you know, Kelly, why have you saved something that's so tiny you can't even pick it up? All right, I'm gonna iron this piece real quick because, woo, that was seriously jammed in there. I just can't get it all out. Even 
doing that because it's hot. Someone in one of my videos commented that I blow on things, which I shouldn't do, but I don't know why I do it. I don't, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I think I was making a mask, and I guess that really didn't go against the, the part of keeping it, but this is my little boy's tooth pillow, so I think it's okay. Y'all, I can't even get that, that all that out, but it's okay. It'll be fine. So, I'm going to cut my heat and bond light again. Sheesh, that's hot. And then for the section that's going to be the pocket on here, what is, oh good, it's ironed out. It's recommended that I cut a piece of fabric roughly three inches wide and five inches long. Okay, so we're doing that out of the gray again. So we're gonna say, okay, so we're cutting this three inch by five inch. So there's five. And then three. There it is right there. And this will be folded over in the hoop um, to make the little pocket. So I'm trying to think. Should I do heat and bond light on this? I guess I will. No, I won't. I'm folding it over. We'll be fine. So I'm just gonna take that piece that we just did. Again, I didn't put heat and bond light on it. I don't think that's necessary. I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to press it. So the top part right there will be the top of the pocket. So it'll be a nice finished edge since we're doing it that way. So I'm just using a pre-cut piece of stabilizer. Um, and I'll link that below in the show notes of which kind that I use. And I'm just using my five by seven hoop. So we're going to slide that in there. All right. And then we're going to run it, we're gonna start it, we're gonna do the placement stitch for the pillow fabric. Pull up our design. I've already um, selected what um, colors that everything needs to be. All right, so we're gonna stop it after the placement stitch. So we're running the placement stitch for our pillow. And now we're going to place your fabric down and run step two. So you want the fabric right side up for this because this is going to be um, the actual top of the pillow that we're working on and that's what we do first. So just make sure it covers the whole placement stitch and we're going to run that as our tack down stitch. So the next few things that we're going to do is just the applique work on top of the pillow. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. I'll probably fast forward this so you don't have to watch every little piece of it. But it's just really doing applique on top of this pillow, just like you would on any kind of shirt, anything that you you know regularly do. If you haven't done a lot of applique, it's very simple. It's going to show us a um, placement stitch. It runs that first. Then we lay the fabric down, and on that then it was a tack down stitch. Then I pull it off the machine and cut really close around the stitching and then we put it back up on for the finishing stitch. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you can see on here that it has the, the um, placement stitch and the tack down stitch. Well, the tack down stitch is what you're seeing here and I'm going to cut along these lines as close as I can and use my 
Nice little fist car. Applique scissors. I don't think they're, they don't say applique when you buy them, on the, but they're what I use and I'll link those below. They just, they're super sharp, super inexpensive. I keep, you know, several of them in my room here, but I just think they're perfect. They're a good size. They're five inch. And they get right up into the little nooks and crannies when you're doing applique work. And when they're you know good and sharp and new and they just they slide right through fabric so that's nice so i'm going to cut all this out here my son's downstairs right now he's eagerly awaiting he knows that i'm making him a surprise and he's six and so he's not very good with waiting and he keeps asking me I don't he told me to give him a little hint. I said it had something to do with his tooth. And so, yeah, he, his guess was that I was making him a silver tooth. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what that, uh, does he think that I'm gonna like put a silver tooth in his mouth? I, I don't know. But I told him no, I wasn't making him a silver tooth. And that I would come show it to him in just a few minutes. Where their little minds go. Okay, so you can see that I've cut around it, and so now I'm gonna put it back. It's gonna do the mouth next. So you can see on here where it's put the pocket. And so what it asks you to do in the directions is you're gonna take, so this was our folded piece of fabric, and we're gonna place it, obviously made it way bigger than it needed to be, right there below the stitch line. Do you see the two little dots there? That's that's the top of the stitch line. So right below it, you wanna see a little bit of that left. That way you know the stitching when the final step is gonna go above that. So just a little bit below it. You can see how we have our pocket there. So now it's gonna go through all the stages of doing like the finishing stitches. So we're gonna let it run its course over here. So it's doing all the finishing stitches, it's doing the outline around the shark, around the mouth, it's doing the teeth, and um, the outline around the pocket, and then it's also going to go ahead and put the personalization details that we included, so it's going to say Thomas's shark tooth, and then so we're going to let it run, I'll let Steve through this part, and we'll show it to you when it's done for the next step. Okay, you look at that, how cute. It really did turn out awesome. So the one thing that I don't love when you're using little tiny um, fonts is the jump stitches because really when you move up into the world of um, multi needles, I, I thought those were gone for good, but they're not. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna show you the greatest tool whatsoever. First, I just kind of do a little snip on one side of it. Okay, so I cut them off on one side and then Y'all have seen me talk about this before. It's my, one of my, no, it's not supposed to be bent. It should be straight, but this is called the Snag Mabbit. I don't know if you can see, if I get it too close. Uh, it's got a texturized, this is what people do when they show jewelry. <laughs> it kind of works. Um, texturized side, and then it's sharp on this end. So you poke the sharp end through, you pull it through your fabric, and the sharp end will pull that little piece through the other side. So I'm gonna find each end and pull it through. It works great. It works great for all monogram, I mean any, anything that you're stitching. If it just has a little piece or if you just, if you pull something off the machine and there's a couple of loops, like ugh, in the beginning I thought that was the end. I didn't want to cut it because I didn't want it to start unraveling once, um, you know, you wore it a few times. So this snag mabbit is the thing for you. Like I literally, like if you were to look on here, we have five of them. If I can't find one of these when I'm doing a project, woo, it literally costs like, I mean, $2 max. I don't even think it costs $2. So I'm just pulling it through all these little end pieces that I just cut. You gotta get kind of close to the stitching so that it pulls it all the way through. So, perfect. So now you can see I removed all of those little jump stitches and used my little snag nabbit. And now it looks awesome. So you can also see how since we left that little bit 
of um, placement stitch um, under uh, above the pillow. Um, it just made it really nice and perfect. Look at that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, it wants us to cut two 18 inch pieces of one and a half inch ribbon. So one, two. Okay, so you can kind of just make sure they're the same on both sides as far as from the sides. It's kind of my take on it. And I'm going to just take a quick little pin to hold it in place. Make sure I don't go out um, by the tech or placement stitch. So I'm just pinning them right there um, about the same distance on each side. And then we do just make sure run the tack down stitch. Tack down. So what we're going to do is we need all these pieces. We're getting ready to put the, uh, the back side on. So we need all these pieces to be folded up and it needs to be within our border here because we don't want to accidentally sew it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of roll it up. It talks about using like a binder clip. So if you have that, that's, that's good. Um, whatever way you can just make sure that it stays in place while you're doing the outside stitch. So I'm going to, oh man, what do I have here? I'm just gonna use a pin. That will work, I think, yeah. Um, so I just pinned it. You can use a binder clip, whatever you find, but you just wanna make sure that it's not touching or it, it's within the perimeter here because we're getting ready to put the back side of our pillow on. And again, we're doing this inside out because it's all in the hoop. So you just want to make sure that all of your ribbon is out of the way. You want to make sure that you're laying the right side of the fabric down and then the top of it will be the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, so if you can see, I just did a few pins and I just have it on top. So we're going to put it back on the machine to run the last step. This is the very last step. So it goes around it several times so it really reinforces the project. So that's good. We're going to clap for our camera here because I'm recording it. <laughs> and so you'll see that it's now gone all the way around it. So I'm going to take these pins out. And so our instructions tell us to remove it from the hoop. Boom, boom. And we're going to pull off as much of the um, stabilizer as we can. So you can see it's on the back there a little closer um, and you don't have to worry about getting you know every last piece out because again this is going to be the inside of the pillow we're not going to see this it's not going to lose any of the function of of our pillow here but we'll just take out as much as we can and tear away is always simple to kind of remove um, really have to come out of all these little areas. I'm actually going to just kind of leave it like that. It'll give it some of its own stability. So there's the back side with all the stitching. I'm leaving just a little bit of that. I'm just really not worried too much about it. And so it says to use your pinking shears. I don't have pinking shears. I don't have those. It's okay. Use the good scissors. So what it says is you use pinking shears to trim around the edge of the pillow, but leave a little extra around the opening for the seam allowance to sew it shut. Y'all don't sew it shut. Not, not by hand like it wants me to. I know I should, but I just take my little sewing machine and sew it shut because I don't want to do that. So anyway, you want to leave a little extra. The rest I'm just going to kind of trim. Not with, it says with pinking shears. If you've got those, y'all, by all means, use your pinking shears. I don't have any of those. I embroider. Should I have those? Like, should those be in my craft toolbox? I just, honestly, 
It wasn't until a little while ago that I, I, I just thought those were for cute paper cutting. I didn't realize they had a purpose. Isn't that sad? My granny taught me a lot about crafting, but I guess we never went over thinking shears 101. I'm just cutting little um, corners because I did learn that, that that way it's easier to have good corners when you do it. So to leave the spot for us to sew, it closed. I'm gonna do just like that at the opening. So I've cut it all the way around and I've just left the extra seam allowance here um, for when we close it. Okay. So we're just gonna pull it out and I do have to be careful. Um, I did have a pin. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that pin. So I'm taking that pin out of where the ribbon was and then I'm just gonna flip it just like you would any pillow that you make or anything that you do inside out just piece by piece okay look look at that oh my goodness I'm gonna run the iron out of it real quick don't some things just make you so excited when you make them I'm so excited I'm so excited look at that stop it stop it stop it that's so cute. Look at that. Seriously, y'all. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna press it one more time. It's harder to press once you put the filling in it. Get those corners out. Okay, so we need to fill it. Um, I just use polyfill. Um, got this at Joanne Fabrics. You can get it on Amazon. I can link some below. Um, it's just a crafter's polyfill. I, Get it whatever kind, it doesn't matter, honestly. You don't need much. Um, so you're just gonna take it and you're gonna stuff it. So you just take that little hole and just put in just as much as you feel like makes it look good. So I just try to put a bunch in then I try to push it into the corners. She talks about doing, you know, the way to finish it is using like a blind ladder stitch. I don't do a lot of hand sewing, I never have. Um, I know you, she even mentions you can look on YouTube to find some um, examples and tutorials on how to do a blind ladder stitch. That's, you know, the way you would make a stitch if you um, didn't want to see any of it. Um, I've tried it, I'm just not that good at it. So uh, I just try to use the same color thread. So I'll just use like a navy thread to, to finish this. Um, at times I've just taken my sewing machine uh, and just done, you know, a row on the bottom. It doesn't look as finished, but it looks finished. It just doesn't look as um, seamless. Um, it's probably the right word for it. But so we'll just take it and close it up there. But just to give you an idea, there it is filled with the filling. And we'll just take some stitching and just do a simple blind ladder stitch down there like suggested and then we'll tie it. So then you just put a real pretty bow for presentation, which I'm not gonna be able to do it on the spot here. And then this is what you hang on the door. So I'll give it to my son and what I'll have him do tonight before he goes to bed. Remember this precious little tooth I showed you. So before he goes to bed, I'm gonna have him put it in the pocket. So he'll put the tooth in the pocket. So the tooth is in there. And then when the tooth fairy comes, the tooth fairy is gonna take that out of the pocket and put money in there. So when he wakes up, he's gonna run to the door, open up the door and look in here and see if the tooth fairy came and if the tooth fairy left him money. I mean, it just doesn't get much cuter than that, does it y'all? Look at that, Thomas's shark tooth. I'm excited to show him. I'll send you a picture and show you about him putting it on the door tonight. I know he's excited. Uh, hopefully he doesn't think I'm bringing down chocolate or anything, but this is super sweet, super fun, and it's all in the hoop. That's what I love about it. So if you think this looks complicated, I promise if you've done an applique, you got it. And the person, I'm sorry, Shannon, 
um, that creates these designs gives you such good instructions but I hope this helped doing it with me tonight and I can't wait for my little one to see it hope you'll have a great night if you have any questions please put them below hope I can get that little tooth out hope the tooth fairy can hope the tooth fairy has cash on her um, if you like this video, please just hit like, subscribe. I promise you I've got so many more videos coming. I'm also in the market for a new machine, so hopefully I'll be showing you that as well. And um, yeah, just keep watching. The, when I move in, hopefully in 16 days, I have an amazing space um, that I've already deemed embroidery nurse's space. So I look forward to using it and um, for you guys to get benefit out of it as well. Hope you have a great night. I'm going to go give this to my little buddy. Bye, guys. Can you show daddy what you lost today? What did you lose? An eyeball. A tooth. A tooth. Let me see. Wow. Is that your first tooth you've ever lost? And what did mommy make you? Let's see our surprise. <gasps> what is it? I don't know. You don't know? Well, hold it up and let's see. You know what it says? Uh, Thomas's shark tooth. You know what you do? What? All right, here's your tooth. So tonight, we need to put it in that pocket. Can you put it in the pocket? <gasps> yeah, drop it in the pocket. And then, can you get it in there? Yeah, just drop it in there and then push it down with one finger. There you okay, go. now hold it up, let me see it. Okay, so tonight we're going to put it on your door, and then the tooth fairy is going to come, and she's going to take that tooth out, and she's going to put money in that pocket. <gasps> Yay!